uh, reminder for you of what we covered about Lorentz transformation with the couple simplifying notations or definitions that we are going to use so that I don't have to keep writing down stuff I don't want to write down. Um, so we define beta as the natural unit velocity, or speed measured as a fraction of speed of light. And we introduce this um, uh, expression gamma that can be expressed in terms of beta is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus beta squared. Um, we define, so this is, uh, I guess they are both definitions. Um, so especially gamma, we introduce this because we see this expression a lot in special relativity and we don't want to write it down every single time. So with those definitions, Lorentz transformation can be written in this way that I remember best. <laughs> um, CT prime, x prime, y prime, z prime. These can be uh, written as, so, so we are assuming, um, so this is a standard assumption, so I feel silly spelling it out every single time, but I should be clear. Um, this is for the prime the frame, for s prime frame, uh, moving, at velocity um, beta c x hat relative to the unprimed, uh, unprimed s frame. That, um, I will never set it up any other way um, because it, uh, otherwise it messes things up. Well, good. So for this, arrange, for this arrangement, this is the Lorentz transformation. So since the velocity is in the x direction, the y coordinates are not affected at all. The x coordinate is affected uh, in some part in the way you would have expected. This, um, the part you would have, would have expected is this part, x minus beta ct or x minus vt which a lot of people would have guessed. But in special relativity, there's this gamma factor. And the time coordinate is the hardest one. This is the one that you have no intuition for. You're, you intuitively would have said that the time coordinate wouldn't change at all. But Lorentz transformation says two things. One, um, there's this term that gets subtracted out. Once you write in this format, actually these two look symmetric. That's how I actually remember it. And we'll talk about them more when we get to this part here, but that's how I always remember it. And there's a gamma factor there also. Okay. And so this uh, set of four equations is what we call Lorentz transformation. Um, this is the third time I'm writing it down from scratch, so hopefully none of this sounds unusual. And the uh, special formulas that we had derived before was for time dilation. We said that, um, so for, if you have a clock that's measuring time in its own reference frame, we call that proper time, and it's ticking down time tau. And if the clock is moving relative to you, moving at speed v, then the ticking down of this clock is uh, slower compared to your own clock. And the time you measure on your own watch would be t, and the statement of time dilation is the time you measure is longer than the time that the moving clock measures. So t is equal to gamma tau, right? And this is, um, the, so this we did both ways correctly. And the second one is what I want you to mess up next time, I mean, I mean sorry, last time. And I didn't quite mess it up the way I wanted to mess it up. So let me first write down the expression that we derived uh, last, not last Thursday, last Tuesday. Last Tuesday, so we derived length contraction. Um, 
when we drive this last time, we just drive it using uh, the two uh, the two postulates of special relativity, that relative the principle of relativity and the constancy of uh, speed of light. And what I want you to do uh, last lecture on Thursday was redrive this expression, but show you that you had to be careful. Um, so this is the expression we derived last Tuesday, that if you have a ruler, let's say, you know, you have a ruler of some length, and it, uh, the each one length we would call the proper length. It's the length you would measure in the ruler's own reference frame. So that say, call that proper length, LP. And now you are trying to measure the, um, measure the length of the ruler as it's zooming by you. And when you measure it that way, um, call that length L, you realize that it's actually shorter than what the proper length is. So that how much it's shorter by is given by factor gamma again. Yeah. So this is, um, so these are the two special situation formulas. And um, I mean, you guys have been taking physics for quite a while. You know the distinction between general formula and special formulas, right? Yes? Newton's laws, is it a special formula or a general formula? Newton's laws of motion. Really? Newton's laws of motion, first, the second, third law? It's generally applicable. I mean, you know, you, with the special relativity, you have to make the correction that Newton's laws are, you know, valid approximations at low speed limit. But when I'm, I'm taking you back to physics 4A, when you are taking physics 4A, were Newton's laws special formulas or generalized uh, uh, law that you would use it under any circumstance? General, right? In physics 4A, you use the Newton's law for every single problem. Now, in physics 4A, you might have seen this formula, that if you have uh, some kind of inclined plane, let's say it's frictionless, and you have something sitting here, and it's uh, you know, rolling, I'm um, sliding downhill, then you can actually drive the acceleration. And when you are done with the derivation, you would have gotten acceleration is g sine theta. Right? Remember that? This is an example of a special formula. This formula is applicable only to this situation and this situation only. Whereas the Newton's law, the Newton's second law, that acceleration is net force divided by mass, this is a general formula always applicable to everything. It, it's a, a distinction that if you weren't clearly making it before, it's useful to make it now. Um, because that's the distinction between these two. Lorentz transformation is the general law. This applies in every single situation. Sometimes we call this the full Lorentz transformation <coughs> to make that fact clear. Full Lorentz transformation. It, there is no situation under the sun where this is wrong. And you know, under the low speed limit, there was no situation under the sun where this was wrong, under the low speed approximation. And, and these two are special formulas. These two are valid for the situation that they were derived in, but it's really easy to misuse them if you try to extend them, extend them beyond the situation where they were derived. It's the same thing for this. A equals G sine theta, it's perfectly valid for this situation. But if you try to extend it beyond where it was derived, maybe instead of something sliding down, you are dealing with something that's rolling down, then you, know, you can get into trouble trying to use special formulas as if they were general formulas.